And then I want you to elaborate about speaking in tongues. There's this issue, issue about elaborating about speaking in tongues. Again, ta speaking in tongues, what to elaborate? Because tongues is a very huge topic. What can I elaborate about tongues? Tongues are a The word tongues means language. Praise the Lord. In fact, that, that this gets me into something that we talked about in our, in our MC. About Mukawa MC. Didn't we talk about tongues a bit? Just Kalito, but yeah. But uh, tongue, the word, by the way, the word tongues is just overly spiritualized, but the word tongue means orulimi, which means language. Hallelujah. So when you say that I'm speaking in another tongue, what I'm saying is I'm speaking in another language. Glory to God. Now, tongues, speaking in tongues is one of the evidences of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Let me explain that. Glory to God. When somebody gets born again, when somebody gets born again, the very, the very experience of being born again is the work of the Holy Spirit. We are together. So, everybody that is born again has the Holy Spirit in them. Are we together? Follow me very closely here. Everybody that is born again has the Holy Spirit in them. In fact, it is impossible to be born again without the Holy Spirit. So everybody that is born again has the Holy Spirit in them. That is point number one. Are we following? Point number two. After being born again, there is something that the Bible calls being baptized with the Holy Spirit. That is different from the infilling that you get when you got born again. Are we together? Now, and the, uh, the, the way the Bible distinguishes the two is one, uh, one is referred to most of the times as the Holy Spirit in you, and then the other is referred to as the Holy Spirit coming upon you. We are together. So, we have many people, even in the Bible, I'm going to show you examples of people in the scriptures who were believers, but they had not yet experienced this second, they had not got this second experience of the Holy Spirit coming upon them, which results in speaking in other tongues. So, it is true that everyone that is born again has the Holy Spirit on the inside of them, but not everyone is necessarily baptized with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, what does it take? Because you see, somebody might say, uh, if I have the Holy Spirit, it is okay. Uh, I, why, do I need, do I, why do I need that second thing? The, if the Bible says that you need it, then you do need it. Amen. In the, book of, in the book of Acts chapter number 8, uh, the Bible says that uh, Peter, I mean, what's his name? Philip had gone to preach in Samaria. Philip had gone to preach in Samaria. And when he reached Samaria, he preached the gospel to them. And the Bible says that they received the gospel. Somebody said they received the gospel. Now, when they received the gospel, the Bible says that when they received the gospel, the apostles sent to them Peter and John. They sent Peter and John to a place where Philip had preached the gospel and people had received the gospel. Now, when they received the gospel, now Peter and John were sent. And the Bible says that, and when they, were, when they reached there, they prayed for these people who had received the gospel that they might be baptized with the Holy Ghost. But when they believed, Peter's preaching, da 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 uh -uh. Look for the place where, P where Peter and John were sent. This is Philip preaching there. Now the apostles sent there Peter and John. Mm -hmm. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. Uh -huh. Continue. Who when, they were, who when they were come down prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Let me ask you. Had these people received the gospel... Does that mean they were born again? But had they received the Holy Ghost? So the Bible says that when the apostles that were at Jerusalem heard that these guys had received the gospel, they sent unto them 
Peter and John. Now, when Peter and John reached these believers, the first order of business was to pray for them that they receive the Holy Ghost. So you see that getting born again is different from receiving the Holy Ghost. Are we together? Another example I can give is in Acts chapter number 19. In Acts chapter number 19, Paul goes to the city of Ephesus. And uh, the Bible says, And it came to pass, and it came to pass, that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coasts, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples. Certain what? So were these believers? They were believers. That's why the Bible calls them disciples. So Paul, he found certain disciples. Uh -huh. Look at the conversation they had. Verse number two. He said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? So in other words, they had believed. Were they believers? Now Paul is asking them that since you believed, have you received the Holy Ghost? That means Paul also knows that you can believe when you have not received the Holy Ghost. And look at their answer. So he said, and he said unto them, ah, go back, o, o He said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether, they be, whether there be any Holy Ghost. So they said that, Holy Ghost, we have not even heard of any Holy Ghost. They were believers, but they didn't even know that there was a Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Amen. Yeah, verse number three. Then Paul asked them, he said unto them, unto what, unto what then were you baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. That's a baptism of water. They were, they were only baptized in water. Glory to God. Uh -huh. Then verse number four. And then Paul said, John very baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him who should come after him. That is on Jesus Christ. Verse number five. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus uh -huh. and, and, and what happened afterwards? And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them. Somebody said the Holy Ghost came on them. The Holy Ghost came on them. These were believers, but the Holy Ghost had not come on them until Paul laid his hands on them. Paul laid his hands on them, and when he laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. They spoke with what? Tongues and prophesied. Glory to God. Yeah. So they were believers who had never received the Holy Ghost until Paul laid his hands on them and the Holy Ghost came upon them and they began to speak with other tongues. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So, now, of course, now there, there, there I'm, I've just done that just to show you that it is possible for one to be born again, a believer, and yet not baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not, and yet the Holy Ghost has not come upon them, and they don't speak in other tongues. It is very possible. Now, a person speaking in tongues does not mean that they are more saved than one who doesn't speak in tongues. Are we together? But a person speaking in tongues has certain advantages that the other person who doesn't speak in tongues does not have. What are those advantages? Point number one. What or, or the advantage of, of, of praying in other tongues? The Bible says that he that prays in an, in an unknown tongue. Give me First Corinthians chapter number 14. Let's read it. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians number one. Give me verse number three. Give me verse number three. But he, de, 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 all right. But he that prophesies speaketh unto men. Okay, begin from, from verse number two. Mm. For he that speaketh, put, use NKJV so that it doesn't confuse us. All right, let's read together. Let's read together. One, two, three, let's go. Let's let's start again. Ibrakova maze. Wadova maze. Hallelujah. All right, let's read let's read again together. One, two, three, let's go. Mm -hmm. Why? Uh -huh. Now that, that that confuses people. 
They think that when you're speaking in tongues, you're being, you're being daft or you're being mad or you're being what? The Bible is saying that, you know, he that speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but unto God. Because no man understands him. So you're not speaking to men, you're speaking to God. That's why the men who don't understand you think you're crazy. The, but the Bible is saying, however, in the spirit, he speaks what? Mysteries. In the spirit, he speaks mysteries. Continue. Verse number three. Mm -hmm. And comfort unto men. We'll get to, uh, that, that explains a lot about prophecy. That prophecy is for the purpose of edification, exhortation, and comfort. So never receive any prophecy that does not meet one of these three. Glory to God. The Bible says that he that prophesies, prophesies unto what? Edification, exhortation, and comfort. So never receive a prophecy that is just scaring you. Glory to God. Somebody came to me, somebody came to me one time and told me, Pastor, I received a prophecy and they, that told me my mother is going to die in October. And I asked this lady that, were you comforted when you go to that prophecy? No. Were you edified? No. Were you exhorted? No. Don't receive it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. New Testament prophecy comes for three purposes. Edification, exhortation, and comfort. So don't, don't go around just getting prophecies for the sake of prophecies and, and, and you get even wrong things. Anyway, that's a topic for another day. Continue, verse number four. Uh-huh. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. Glory to God. So the Bible is saying that he who speaks in a tongue edifies him what? Self. So if you're looking for edifying yourself, the Bible is telling you the way to do it is by speaking in tongues. Because when you speak in tongues, you edify yourself. You, you strengthen yourself. You energize yourself. You recharge yourself. Glory to God. Yeah, so those times, and this is why I'm saying that it's very important that you speak in tongues because there, there will be times when you're down and you don't know why you're down and you just need to be edified. You need to be encouraged. You need to be lifted. The Bible is saying that the way to edify and lift yourself and to recharge, to re You see, this edify, the word edify there may, 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 may confuse. It's like you recharge yourself. Do you know, have you, have you had a battery of a phone? Yeah? Sometimes your spirit, you feel like the charge... Have you, have you ever felt like that? You, you, for some reason, you just feel spiritually spent. You are low. You don't know what to do. And so, so, hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm sure no one has understood what I've said except my wife. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hmm? The Bible is saying what to do during those times is speaking in tongues because when you're speaking in tongues, you edify yourself, you build yourself up, you recharge yourself. Glory to God. Amen. Those times when you're feeling low, you don't know what to do, you feel depressed, you feel discouraged, you feel what the Bible is saying, that the way to recharge yourself, to re-energize yourself is by speaking in tongues. So... Next time you find somebody sitting there and it feels like, it, it, it looks like they're just idle, but they're just there. Ne never for one minute think they're idle. They are doing something that is recharging themselves. They are, they are being energized by their Holy Ghost in the inner man. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You're doing something that no one, nothing external can do for you. Let me tell you, there is nothing external that can re-energize your spirit. When your spirit is low, even if they give you money, it might excite you, but it will not change the state of your spirit. Are we together? Yeah. So it's very important. During those times when you're low, during those times when you don't know what to do, during those times when everything seems to have turned upside down, the thing to do, the thing to do is to speak in other tongues. Why? Because when you're speaking in other tongues, the Bible says you are encouraging, you are emboldening yourself, you are recharging yourself, you're re-energizing yourself, you're coming out of that state of depression. How does it work? Makabredo zedevata kalaba ba zetalaba lepoka setele mande kozatalaba. No man understands what you're saying, but the Bible is saying that in the spirit you're speaking what mysteries? What mysteries are you speaking? Can I show you what mysteries you're speaking? Can I show you what mysteries you're speaking? 
Uh, at Muchinzi Jemu, glory to God. You know the Bible says that the counsel lies in the depth of a what? But a, a wise man brings it out. But make a bunch of me gundi proverb. In the heart of man, but what? Mm. Mm. A man of understanding draws it out. Glory to God. Sometimes there is counsel in another person's heart, and you need to draw it out. Glory to God. Yeah, now of course it can work as an individual to an individual knowing that there is counsel, but sometimes there are certain things that are in another person. You need to know how to bring out certain things in certain people. Glory to God. So when I stand here and I tell you, can I tell you? There is certain counsel that you are not going to get out of me. Hallelujah. So can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen? Can I tell you? The Bible is saying that in the spirit, he that speaks in unknown tongue, does not speak unto him, but in the spirit he speaks mysteries. Can I show you the mysteries that you'll be speaking? Okay, First Corinthians chapter number 2. Give me verse. Let's, let me read from verse 7. So follow me as I read. Alright? Are we together? The Bible says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. Okay? If, just follow me reading. Verse number 8. Uh -huh. Which none, which none, which which is that? The wisdom. We are together. Which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Uh -huh. Verse number 9. But as it is written, as it is what? Now this is a verse that many people confuse because they think it still holds to us. Glory to God. But you see, the, the scripture here is quoting... He's quoting an Old Testament scripture. Are we together? He's saying, as it is written, I has not seen. Somebody say, I has not seen. I not seen. No ear heard. No nor have entered into the heart of man. No the things which God has prepared for those that love him. So, that is a scripture that is being quoted in the Old Testament now, the next verse, give me verse number 10. Verse number 10 begins with what? But. But, but is a what? So, verse 9 is saying, it is written, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has come into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those that love him. But God has revealed them to us. Somebody said, God has revealed them to us. So in other words, it is no longer true that it has, no, it has not entered the heart of any man. It was true in the Old Testament. But right now the Bible is saying, but God has revealed them to us. What has God revealed to us? Go back, go back, go back to verse, go back to verse number 9. Let's read verse number 9 together. Let's follow. Now you know the question I'm going to ask, so be looking for the answer. Eh? We are together. Let's read. One, two, three. Let's go. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. The things which God has prepared for what? How many of you love God? So, in other words, there are things that God has prepared for you. There are things that God has prepared for you. And the Bible is saying that no eye has seen, no what, what, it has not even entered into the heart of any man. The things that God has prepared for those that do what? Yeah. Verse number 10, now go to verse number 10. Mm -hmm. Which, what, has, what are those things, what has God revealed to us? Uh-huh. Mm. So those things that have not entered into any man's heart, no I seen, no what, God has revealed them to us uh -huh, through his spirit. So it is no longer true with us. You cannot be there, you're a New Testament believer, and you say, I has not seen, no ear heard, no what, what. God, the Bible is saying God has revealed them to us. They are no longer hidden. Are we together? They are no longer hidden. How has God revealed them to us? Uh huh. Through his what? Through his spirit. Uh huh. For the spirit... Uh, all things. Yes. The deep things of God. The deep things of God. Uh -huh. Continue. Verse number 11. Mm -hmm. For, 
For and now want, this is this scripture is very important. It says, "For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him?" Glory to God. In other words, no man, no one knows the things of man except the spirit of man. In other words, your spirit knows everything about you. Your spirit knows the things that concern you. Even the things, some of those things have not even come into your mind, but your spirit knows. Glory to God. So, in, and the Bible is saying that, for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, read together, one, two, three, go, even. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Except the spirit of God. Uh-huh, continue. Th that scripture is going to come in very handy, don't forget it. Uh-huh. Now. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Pause, pause, pause there. We're going to continue. So the Bible is saying that just like no one knows the things of a man except the spirit of man that is in him, so no one knows the things of God except the spirit of who? God. Now, immediately after that, they tell you that, look here, we have not received the spirit of the world, but we have received the spirit of of God. So this spirit of God who knows the deep things of God. Somebody said deep things. Deep things. Yeah, the deep things of God. The Bible is saying that is the spirit that we have done what? Received. But why have we received that spirit? Continue. Mm -hmm. Co start again from now we have received. Start from the stop. Uh-huh. 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 Why? That we, so we have received the spirit of God so that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by who? By God. By God. Those are the things that he prepared for those that love him. Remember that verse? So the things that God has prepared for those that love him, the things that God has freely given to us, the Bible is saying that we have received the spirit of God so that we might know these things. Glory to God. So that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Now, going to the next verse very slowly. It's my transition. So you full have very slow. Hallelujah. As in going to the next verse very slowly. Glory to God. Because we're getting to the point there. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. Which things? These things, which things? The ones that God has freely given us. The ones that you prepared for those that love him. The ones that ensure your destiny is bright. The ones that ensure you're prosperous. The ones that ensure that you become a giant. The ones that ensure that you make it in life. The ones that he says in Jeremiah 29, 11. The ones, those things, hallelujah. The Bible is saying that these things will also do what? These things will also do what? These things will do what? How do we speak them? Uh-huh. Not in words which, the, which man's wisdom teaches, but in words which the Holy Spirit does what? In other words, when you're speaking in words that the Holy Spirit teaches, you are speaking and declaring the things that God has freely given you, the things that God prepared for those that love him, the things that God ordained for you to have in order to fulfill your destiny. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Yeah. So, these things, we've received the Holy Ghost, we've received the Spirit that is of God, that we might know these things. Which things we speak, which things we speak, not in words that, are, that is taught by man's wisdom, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. Glory to God. So, do you know when you're speaking the language that is taught by the Holy Ghost, do you know what you're doing? You're speaking the things that God ordained for you to have. You're speaking, you're speaking the things that God planned for you. Listen, that predicament, that predicament that you're in, God knows the way out, but you don't know it. But for you, you don't know. But the Bible is saying when you're declaring the perfect will of God out of that situation to get you into the place that God ordained for you to be. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. 
Yeah. So when you're hearing people speaking in tongues, when you're hearing people speaking in tongues, they are speaking a language that is taught of the Holy Ghost. They are speaking a language that declares the things that God prepared for them to have, the things that God gave them freely. Amen. Are you still there? Yeah. Now listen, this is, this is the issue with speaking in tongues. This is the issue with speaking in tongues. Give me, uh, we are coming back here. I, I want you to remember, I want you to remember that the Spirit of God, the Bible has said that no man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of man that is in him. We are together. Yes. Except the Spirit of man that is in him. Then the Bible says that even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. For the Spirit of God searches all, all things, yea, the deep things of God. So we have the Spirit of man. This is Martin. This is the Spirit of Martin. Hallelujah. I, <laughs> this is the spirit of who? Martin. Hallelujah. And they are saying that the spirit of Martin knows the things of God. Hallelujah. And then, uh, the, sorry, the spirit, uh, the spirit of Martin knows the things. In other words, when Martin is feeling lonely and Martin doesn't know why he's feeling lonely, his spirit knows that the reason you're feeling lonely is because you have not gone to church for three weeks. But Martin thinks I'm feeling lonely because sister, sister so and so hasn't yet called me. You, you get that? Eh? So his spirit knows the exact reason why everything is happening. His spirit knows everything perfectly about Martin. And then on this hand, we have the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Who we shall not exemplify with anything. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And the Bible is saying that the spirit of God knows everything about God. We are together. Now, I want you to know, I want you to see what exactly is happening when somebody is speaking in other tongues. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter number 14. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter number 14. And give me verse number 14. Give me verse number 14. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's read it, but give it to me in the Amplified. Give it to me in the Amplified. Mm -hmm. Let's read together. Let's see what happens when somebody is speaking in other tongues. Are we ready? Yes. Are we ready? Yes. Uh -huh. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 14, 14. Let's read together. One, two, three, go. Uh -huh. Ma uh -huh. This, the Bible is describing what happens when you're praying in tongues. It's saying that when you're praying in tongues, your spirit by the Holy Spirit is praying. Your mind is unproductive. In other words, your mind also doesn't understand what you're saying. So I have people who ask me that. So do you understand what you're saying when you're what does Shabba Kata Kalama mean? I tell them I don't know. Because my mind is what? Unproductive. My mind is what? Unproductive. Unproductive. But my spirit, the Bible is saying, but my spirit is praying by the Holy Spirit. In other words, your spirit is praying in conjunction with the Holy Spirit. Are we together? Your spirit is praying by the Holy Spirit within you. Now, this is the most powerful thing that can happen in, to anybody. Because you have your spirit that knows everything about you. Are you listening to me? Your spirit that knows what the exact problem is. Your spirit that knows why your chest is paining. For you think your chest is paining because you slept badly. But your spirit is saying, ah, ah, it's because there is some bitterness. So your spirit knows everything about you. Your spirit knows your exact problems. Your exact what? Now, your spirit that knows everything about you is praying by the Holy Spirit who knows everything about God. Do you know what, what happens? In other words, your spirit who knows your exact problem is praying by the Holy Spirit who knows the exact solution. 
Your spirit is praying. In other words, it is a combination of somebody who knows your exact situation with somebody who has access to the entire wisdom and power of God. Your spirit by the Holy Ghost. You see, that's what makes praying in tongues fail proof. Because it gets your mind, it gets your mind out of the problem. When you're praying in your understanding, you, you think you know what the problem is. You think you know what to pray. In fact, that's why the Bible says that the Spirit of God helps our infirmities. For we know not what to pray for as we ought. Now, the praying in tongues helps you to solve that problem. Why? Because you don't know what to pray for as you ought. You think you need money, yet you actually don't need money. What you need is an idea. What you need is wisdom. You, need, you, you think you need to meet Uncle X, yet you don't, you don't know that Uncle X is the one causing you problems. You don't know that you should distance yourself. So, when you're praying, you're saying, Lord, bring back Uncle X, bring Uncle John that he may help me. Uncle John is the solution. Cause Uncle John to look favorably upon me. You don't know that Uncle John is actually the one doing certain things. Not our John here. Hallelujah. Only Uncle John. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But your spirit knows. The Bible says that no one knows the things of a man except his spirit that is with him. In other words, your spirit knows everything. It knows your exact situation. What is causing what? Why what is happening? Why, 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 why this one? Why the other one went? And why this one is coming? Your spirit knows why the money is going right there. Why your spirit knows everything. And now the Bible is saying that when you're praying in tongues, you're praying by the Holy Ghost who knows everything about God. In other words, you, you, you're, getting, you're getting somebody that has the perfect, perfect knowledge of your situation in conjunction with somebody that has the perfect solution to every problem. Amen. And that is what makes praying in tongues very, very powerful. Glory to God. Amen. That is why the apostles, every time, every time that they met a Christian who wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost, the first thing they did was to make sure that the person is filled with the Holy Ghost and speaks in other tongues. Because it is the game changer in life. Amen. It is a game changer. Amen. Are you still there? Yes. Oh yes. So, the question was for me to elaborate. Have I elaborated a bit? Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. There are, many, there are many other advantages. There are many other advantages that we may not have time to get into. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah 28, uh, 28.10, With stammering lips, with stammering lips, and with another tongue, shall he speak to his people. Now, now you see, you may say that, what does stammering lips here mean? But when you read in, 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 in 1 Corinthians chapter number 14, Paul used that to, 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 to say, 14.21, Paul used, quoted that scripture to refer to the fact that God was speak, talking about speaking in tongues. Hmm? In 1 Corinthians 14.21, in the law, the law is the Old Testament, we are together. Are you seeing this? He says, in the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips I will speak to these people, and yet for all that they will not hear me. Glory to God. Yeah? So, where is he get, Because here Paul is teaching about speaking in tongues. Are we together? Paul is teaching about speaking in tongues, and then he says, with men of other tongues and other lips I will speak to his people, and yet they will, for, uh, for all that they will not hear. So, where was Paul quoting? Because he's quoting here. He's quoting Isaiah 28, now, if we go back to where Paul was quoting and we get the exact context of what you are saying, it will show you something. Glory to God. Now, go, go to Isaiah 28, because that's where Paul was quoting. For with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to these people, to whom he said, to whom he said, to whom... Let's read together from, from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. 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 To whom he said... This is the rest wherewith he causes the weary to what? And what? Continue. And, yeah, they would not hear. 
God is saying with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to these people. And he tells them that this is the rest. This is the rest. Now remember, Paul has told us in 1 Corinthians 14 that here God was referring to speaking in tongues. Are we together? He's referring to speaking in tongues. And God here, he's saying that he said, this is the rest wherewith he causes the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, but they would not hear. So God is there saying that this is the rest. What is the rest? And God is saying that is the rest. That is the rest for your soul. And that is the refreshing. Glory to God. That is the refreshing. Are you looking for refreshing for your soul? Are you looking for... Uh, Pastor, I don't know. I do let me tell you, God is saying that for all he told, he said they would not hear. Why? Because it doesn't make sense. So people discard it. But God is saying that this is the rest, this is the refreshing. What is the refreshing? Another tongue and stammering lips. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Yeah. So it causes rest, it causes refreshing. Listen, your body, your, how does your body rest? When you, for example, when you go to sleep, hallelujah. When you go to sleep, your body should rest. Some people don't rest even if they sleep, hallelujah. But at least we know that your body should rest when you do what? When you sleep. But when you sleep, your spirit doesn't sleep. I hope you know that. When your body is sleeping, your spirit doesn't sleep. So, how did God ordain for your spirit to rest? This is the rest wherewith I will cause the weary to rest. This is the rest wherewith I'll cause the weary to rest. And it says, this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. God is telling them that when you need refreshing, how you get refreshing is But God is saying that I tell them, but they don't hear. That is why when they, are, when they need refreshing, they, they, they are tired, they just, they just cuddle up and go in the corner and fall into depression. And yet he is saying that if you need refreshing, get up of that seat and you start rekezo pradivada as you're doing that you are refreshing yourself and you're getting rest for your spirit hallelujah rest this is the rest wherewith i'll cause the weary to rest glory to god so the times when you're feeling weary the times when you're feeling tired the times when you feel you need refreshing the time when you feel like i'm tired of it that is the perfect time to get up and speak in other tongues why you're resting you're refreshing but even more so your spirit that knows everything about you is praying with the holy ghost that knows everything about god Amen. hallelujah oh yes so speaking in other tongues is not just a time waster. It is not something that you just do to show. Listen, it is very, very, very essential for any Christian who is going to make it successfully. Amen. There is so much, as in you cannot, you, 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 you cannot, you cannot. It's not a waste of time. It's not a joke. It's not playing games. There is a lot of benefit to it. There's a lot of benefit to it. Are we seeing what I'm seeing? Glory to God. Yeah. This is the refreshing. This is the rest wherewith I'll cause the weary to rest. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I've elaborated. Now, of course, when I say that, when having, having said that, sometimes it gets the people who speak in tongues very excited because you know, you know, I'm just going to go and speak in tongues and edify myself and recharge myself and whatever. But then, for those who have not yet been uh, baptized with the Holy Ghost, those that don't speak in tongues, it gets them into a state of, hey mama, hey mama, cut now, now what of us? What of us? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. The beauty is, the beauty is, it's not very complicated to get baptized with the Holy Ghost. And start speaking in other hands. It's not complicated at all. People complicate it just to feel they are spiritual. But it's not complicated at all, at all, at all. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's not complicated. Yeah. In fact, if there's anyone here that wants to be baptized with the Holy Ghost and start speaking in tongues, you can today. Glory to God. I can help you if you shoot, if you shoot up your hand. If you're there and you're saying, Pastor, I don't speak in other tongues, I want to. I want to. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I want to, yeah, shoot, shoot, shoot that hand up. I want to know, I want to know, I want to know those that I want to help. Glory to God. 
So at least I have, I, I have at least four or five or six. Glory to God. Yeah. Now I can help you. Can I help you? Right. Like I said, it's not complicated. There are no gymnastics about it. Don't expect that uh, I'm going to say, Holy Ghost, touch, and then you start falling and jumping in the air. That's not that. You, no, I'm, and I'm not saying it can't happen, but uh, it usually doesn't. It's not part of the experience. Glory to God. It's not part of the experience at all. You know, sometimes, sometimes uh, we have certain spectacular things that happen, and then we, we, tend, we confuse the real experience with the spectacular. In the, in the book of Acts chapter number 2, the Bible says they were seated together in one place. Then there came a sound as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the room where they were sitting. And then there appeared cloven tongues as of fire, and it sat upon their heads, and they began to speak with our tongues, and the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. Glory to God. Put it up. So this is, this is, this, that, that's what happened in the book of Acts. Yeah? But, listen, from that day, many other people were filled with the Holy Ghost. We have never seen cloven tongues of fire on anyone's head again. Unless you've seen them somewhere. Me have not. Praise the Lord. So you realize that the tongues of fire that sat on their head were not necessarily part of the experience. Because many other people, in fact in the book of Acts chapter number 10, Paul went to Cornelius' house and he preached there and people got born again and the Bible says that the Holy, the Holy Ghost fell upon them and they began to speak with other tongues. Now when he was reporting back to the apostles at Jerusalem, he told them that in Cornelius' house, they were filled with the Holy Ghost just like we were at the beginning. You get it? He said that they were filled with the Holy Ghost just like us in the beginning. But you realize, us in the beginning, there were cloven tongues of fire, the place shook, there was a mighty rushing wind, all that. In Cornelius' house, there was no cloven tongues of fire, there was no wind, there was nothing shook, no people fell down, nothing. All that happened, the Holy Ghost came upon them, and the only evidence that they saw was that they spoke with other tongues. Are we together? So you realize that all these spectacular things of the wind, the fire, the what, were not actually part of the, of the experience. So when I say that I'm, you're going to receive the Holy Ghost, don't expect fire to come down. Don't e expect only one thing. You are going to speak. The Holy Spirit is going to come upon you and you're going to speak in other tongues. That's all. All the other spectacular things that we saw in the Bible are not really part of it. Because even in the Bible, many other people received the Holy Ghost without cloven tongues of fire. That is point number one. Somebody say that is point number one. Point one. Glory to God. And as I, this is Peter reporting. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, upon us, upon them, as upon us at the beginning. You see that? The Holy Spirit fell upon them as upon us at the beginning. But at the beginning, there were cloven tongues of fire. There was a mighty rushing wind. There were what? In Cornelius' house, none of that was there. And yet Peter says it is the same thing that happened. What happened to them is the same thing that happened to us. So in other words, the fire and the wind and what were not part of the experience because the niche, it wasn't there at Cornelius' house. So even if you don't see cloven tongues of fire and the wind here, in fact, if you first see wind here, the first suspicion might be to glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's point number one. Point number two. You see, I, 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 I do this because I, I want to help people. For, us, when we were, for me, when they were praying for me to receive the Holy Ghost, it was very confusing. Because people told me, people, people had told me, you know, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, the, 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 the feeling or the idea that you get is that he comes upon you and gets a hold of your mouth and then he starts, and then he starts making you speak things and you're like, man, I want to stop, but eh, I can't the spirit. No, it doesn't happen like that. Glory to God. The, the Holy Spirit doesn't get, get a hold of your faculties and you become uncontrollable. You start uncontrollably speaking. As in, as you hear you, as in, ba, 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 ba. guys, help me to stop. <laughs> it, it doesn't happen like that. You see, what, 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 how that made life difficult for us is because for me, when, when they were praying for me to receive the Holy Ghost, I was there, I was like, okay. I know this thing of speaking in other tongues. First of all, I was asking, what, what, what do I speak? So I was like, let me make life easy for the Holy Spirit. Let me open my mouth. So they were playing. <laughs> they were playing. They were playing. Such that, that the Holy Ghost, 
finds it easy to, to hurt. <laughs> and it didn't work, glory to God. It didn't work. And I was, uh, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was in senior three at that time, I remember. And I was in uh, some guy's room. Uh, he, was in, he was in Form 6. You know, Form 6s had, had their own rooms. So this guy called us to his room to pray for us to receive the Holy Ghost. In fact, I was strict to go there because we knew this guy. This guy was on fire. This guy was on fire. So we knew that going to his room, if you went to this guy's room on a random day, you'd peep through the keyhole and you just find the people slain. So he just knew that this guy, uh, uh, you just don't go to his room. So my, my, a friend of mine who ended up being my roommate, even at, at uh, anyway, he just told me, let's go there, let's go I said, like, I'm not going to that guy's room. I'm not going to that guy's room. I'm scared I could go, praise the Lord. Like I said, no, it's just fellowship. It's just fellowship. Let's go. When we reached there and we entered, they closed the door and said, now we are going to receive the Holy Ghost. I said, but <laughs> glory to God. But anyway, so the point I'm trying to make is the Holy Spirit doesn't get a hold of you and take control of your faculties and just starts uncontrollably making you say. You see, speaking in tongues, it's not that you've lost control of yourself. You can begin speaking in tongues and you can stop. Glory to God. Right now, I, I can decide. I can, for example, at the count of three, those of you who can speak in other tongues. One, two, three. When I say stop, you stop. Stop. You see? You, uh, it's in your control, right? Hallelujah. So the idea that the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you and just... <laughs> no, that, that's not true. Glory to God. In Acts chapter number two, the Bible says that the Holy Ghost came upon them and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them what? Listen, let's read together. One, two, three, let's go. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Who began to speak? They began to speak. So in others, it is you who begins to speak, and then the Holy Spirit gives you utterance. Many times when I'm helping people to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, they ask me, Pastor, okay, now, I know you're going to pray for me, but now, what will I say? Should I just copy what I... And I'm like, no. You, you will begin to speak. And when you begin to speak, the Holy Spirit will give you what? Utterance. So whatever, you speak, whatever comes out when you speak, that will be what the Holy Spirit has given. It doesn't have to sound like mine. It doesn't have to sound like hers. It doesn't have to sound like just whatever comes out. But it is you who begins to do what? To speak. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is point number two. Glory to God. It is you who begins to what? And the Holy Spirit gives you what? Utterance is what to say. Glory to God. Then point number three. This will help somebody also. How many of you can speak two languages? How many of you can speak English? Uh -huh. How many of you can speak Luganda? Uh -huh. How many of you can speak English and Luganda at the same time? Eh? Ah, you see you can't. You either pause the English and speak Luganda or you, you, you mix the two and you say, uh, can't. Kamuko here, hallelujah. But you, and you say Mukamuko here, glory to God. But you see, you're just mixing the two. But you, the reason is because you have one mouth, you can only speak one language at a time. So when we say you're going to speak in tongues, don't speak English. Those of you that have put up your hands, I'm going to pray for you. By the way, I'm going to pray for you, and you're going to receive the Holy Ghost. There's no doubt about that. Uh, today, today, today. I'm going to pray for you and you're going to receive the Holy Ghost. How do I know that you're going to receive the Holy Ghost? Because the scripture says that when you ask God, when you ask your father for a fish, does he give you a serpent? No. When you ask him for, for an egg, does he give you a stone? No. no. So what makes you think that we'll ask and he doesn't give us? Praise the Lord. Amen. So you are going to receive the Holy Ghost and you're going to start speaking in other tongues. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That is point number what you have asked point yendala. Point is that uh, how do you receive, because people will say, how do you receive the Holy Ghost? Am I going to feel some wind blowing on me? Am I going to feel some, a, a hot breeze? Am I going to, no, you're not going to feel anything. So how will I know that I've received the Holy Ghost? Because God said you receive. That is what they call faith. Glory to God. Amen. 
this is a, this is a spiritual thing. You only access it by faith. So I'm not going to, you're not going to shake. You're not going to what? But now if you shake, it's okay. I don't, I don't stop you. But the shaking has nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. Are we together? The shaking has nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. And, 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 and listen. Maybe let me, I also need to correct this. I am going to pray for you to receive the Holy Spirit, not to be given the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit was already given. The Bible says that in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon what? All flesh. And blah, blah, blah. That, that's, that, that, that's a prophecy in jo the book of Joel chapter 2 verse 28. Glory to God. Now in the book of Acts chapter number 3, the Bible tells us, Paul comes up and he explains to people and he tells them, this is that which was prophesied by the prophet Joel. In other words, what was prophesied by the prophet Joel has already come to pass. The Lord has already poured out his spirit. And he has never recalled him. So in other words, the Holy Spirit is available for whoever will receive. And that is why even in the New Testament, when, when the scriptures we read, when, when Peter and John went to, went to Samaria, they did not pray for them to be given the Holy Spirit. They prayed for them to receive the Holy Spirit. In other words, the, the issue is at the point of reception. Do you receive the Holy Ghost? God has already given the Holy Ghost. Do you receive the Holy Ghost? So somebody say, Pastor, I want to receive the Holy Ghost. How do I receive the Holy Ghost? By receiving the Holy Ghost. There's no gymnastics about it. I'm not going to say you lift up hands until they are aching. No, you simply receive by faith. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah, you simply receive by faith. You just open your heart and say, Father, thank you for giving the Holy Spirit. I receive the Holy Spirit right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. And if you're, if you're genuine about it, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, yeah. Like I told you, it's that simple. So, you, we don't have to come here and first make a lot of noise and what until people are falling out of tiredness and then what? No. Simple. Receive the Holy Ghost. How do you know that you've received? Because the Bible says you receive. It is by faith. Now, after receiving, you'll speak in other tongues. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Is somebody ready to receive the Holy Ghost? Is somebody ready to receive the Holy Ghost? If you're ready, just, just put up your hand. Just put up your hand and I pray for you. Glory to God. <clears throat> Amen. So, Father, we thank you and we bless you for today. We thank you for the ministry of the Spirit. We thank you because you had somebody in mind when you led us this way. You had somebody in mind when you led us in this direction. And Father, I thank you because your people have been ministered to. And their lives will never be the same again. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say amen. Amen, amen and amen. <laughs>